On this episode of the podcast, we talk about why setting expectations in your business is essential to your business's success. Also, how to encourage clients to act faster without coming across like a total jerk, and some thoughts on work-life balance. What's up, friends? Hey, with everything that you've got to do, how can you grow your video business without burning out, actually work with the right clients, and do projects that you love? Well, I'm glad you asked. Every episode, I talk about the issues that we face as video business owners and give you insights that will help you be more productive, get paid what you're worth, be more creative, and, oh, did I mention get more clients? I'm Ryan Coral, and you are listening to the Grow Your Video Business podcast. I'm so happy that you're here. Hey, if you're not inside of our Facebook group, if you've ever felt alone in this video business thing, I want to invite you to come and join our free group uh, we've got, we're nearing a thousand people inside of this group and uh, it is a healthy community of people that are trying to encourage each other, that are uh, referring jobs to each other, video jobs. Um, it is an awesome place to be, to kind of get your feet wet, dip your toe in uh, the water of what, it, what would it look like to build a community of videographer, production people? Would my life be better uh, would I feel less like on an island? Would I be able to ask some hard questions that I've been thinking about, um, frustrated with, frustrated by? Come check out the free group. If you go to studiosherpas.com slash community, uh, it'll take you to the page and would love to see you inside there. Introduce yourself and uh, it'll be a super good time. Also, if you have not uh, taken the free workshop that I have, uh, it's it's the 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 whole heart and soul behind this workshop is to help you get your client's budget and really understand how serious are the people that you're talking to, whether you're on a Zoom call with them or you're on the phone, uh, they say they want video. This workshop, it's about a 40 minute workshop, will walk you through different questions, things that you can ask and ways that you can guide the conversation so that you can walk away from that conversation really having a good idea on what their budget is and or if they're really serious in taking the next step with you. So you can get access to that free workshop if you go to studiosherpas.com slash budget. Would love for you to uh, uh, take advantage of that uh, if you haven't yet. All right, let's hear a word from our sponsor and then we'll jump into this episode. If there was one thing that could have ended my business 17 years ago, it would be because of the numbers. I hate accounting, taxes, W-9s, W-2s, W-40s, <laughs> spreadsheets, all of that stuff. And I hate it mostly because I'm honestly, I'm afraid of it. I'm just not great with numbers. If this sounds familiar or if you're so new in your business that it's not even on your radar yet, you need Core Group. Core Group can help you create financial systems and tax strategies that you need so you can grow profitably. And they've been doing this for over 20 years. They become an extension of your team so that you can stay in your lane of expertise and then lean on them to help guide you along the way. For me, having a team of experts in my corner to help keep track of our books and a just to make sure that we're budgeting for taxes appropriately, to have an actual strategy for our taxes and our accounting is priceless. And it allows me to sleep easier at night knowing that I don't have to be an expert in that arena. If you wanna avoid surprises in your video business and you want experienced help building a plan for the future that you want, both professionally and personally, head over to studiosherpas.com slash core for more information. And when you're ready to set up a free consult with them, make sure to mention Studio Sherpas for a special discount too. Got your back. Get more out of your accountant. Go to studiosherpas.com slash core. What's up, friends? Welcome to this episode. My guest today is Guy Giamo McClung. Guy is the owner operator at Skinny Kid Productions. Guy, I'm so happy that you're here, man. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Hey, Guy. You're welcome. One of my favorite characters of all time is Guy Smiley from Sesame Street. So uh, I, I just like, you know, when you share the name with somebody, you're always like, oh, I kind of like that person. Well, I kind of like you a little bit more because I've always liked Guy Smiley. So there's that. Thanks. I hope I don't ruin the uh, wholesomeness of that name for you too much. <laughs> so, Guy, um, 
you have been a part of the Studio Sherpas world for a while. Um, I have grown to just uh, appreciate you so much as a human being. Uh, for those of you who don't know, who weren't a part of uh, the challenge that we we had, the Grow Your Video Business Challenge uh, some months back, um, every time we had a, 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 like a group session, um, guy was like toting around children, babies, feeding, like doing all of the things on a call, asking questions uh, in the chat, but also being uh, a dad, running a production company, being a husband, all, all of the things. Um, just really, really fun stuff, man. It's a, uh, it's full-time balancing act without a doubt. So <laughs> what's, what, that's what the- like we, we may hear, we may hear one of them crying, uh, uh upstairs <laughs> at some point during this. So, you know. Don't when you get surprised. to be my age, uh, you know, at this point, they're all in school, like for like hours. It's like incredible. That, that's the dream. That's the yeah. dream. I've got one in school right now. And so but, yeah. what's this is I, I do like to, to dig into this a little bit um, for those who have families or are thinking about maybe one day having a family or, you know, just somebody that has a lot of things that juggles a lot of different things. Do you have like, is there any method to your madness or any like tip trick how to do uh, them well enough to where people aren't like, man, guy is just, uh, you know, (laughs) he's super messed up. They might say that anyway. They do say that about me. So I'm curious to know uh, what, what you might do that, uh, that is helpful. Yeah, I would I would like to say that it's methodical, but uh, uh, it's a little bit more scattershot depending on the (laughs) week. Um, So, you know, I'm, Certainly, I'm obviously the primary caregiver of our uh, uh, of our two beautiful children. Um, but the nice thing is, is that working uh, for myself allows me a little bit of flexibility in in what we can do childcare wise. Uh, most recently, I've been you know having a babysitter over to the house mm-hmm. um, you know a number of days a week, and so I can actually just sit at home in my office and get work done. Um, other than that, it's kind of a mix of, you know, parents coming and helping take care of kids when I got to go out of town for a few days to do a shoot or, or something like that. But it's a, it's a mix and match solution. Yes. Yeah. I figured that was probably, I, mean, I didn't think there was a magic bullet, but I'm always just curious. Is there, yeah. if so? Well, like you said, school, uh, the, the, the older child has, has started, you know, school basically full, full time. And that has helped, you know, take a good burden off. So get them in school. Yeah. (laughs) Do what you can. Um, So what, what, what is the thing that got you into video and and tell us a little bit about Skinny Kid Productions? And so, um, uh, actually a fairly, fairly random, uh, how I got into it. I showed up in St. Louis at my sister's wedding the night before my sister's wedding and my, uh, Stepdad showed up there with a little, you know, Sony handy cam, tiny deal, shoved it in my hands and was like, you're filming this wedding tomorrow. And I was like, uh, okay. So I spent all night, you know, cramming through the, uh, um, the, the instruction manual, figuring <laughs> out how to use it. Uh, how many batteries like, did you have? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I had two at most, okay. but it well, was more than know, one. That's it was a-, a low, it was a, you know, it's a low powered deal. So it's not, it wasn't a power hog, like, you yeah, know, the stuff yeah. we <laughs> use these days. But, um, but anyway, uh, did that and then, you know, got some free editing software and cut that together with, you know, the video I did and some of the stills that their photographer took. Um, and was like, this, this was kind of entertaining. This was a little bit fun. So, um, anyway, um, then getting skinny kid going, uh, uh, after that, I was kind of, working, doing some assistant work with a, uh, um, with another photographer and, and we wanted to start doing some, some video stuff. He had some equipment that could, could actually do it. And so essentially got this, uh, up and running and not too long after that, I kind of ventured out on my own and, and been doing all, you know, all different kinds of work since then video wise. And, uh, that's kind of one of the things we're more recently trying to remedy, uh, Mm -hmm. to see if we can narrow some of that stuff down because, uh, uh, you know, ultimately it's probably been a bit more of a hindrance than, mm-hmm. you know, going with the answer. Yeah. I shoot anything that pays. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's you know that's the conundrum that a lot of us find ourselves in. It's we we are super intrigued, like wow, this is really cool, this is fun. Like, what other opportunities are there? And you just take as many opportunities as you can because you don't know what's right. going to be terrible <laughs> and you don't know what's going to be super fun and fulfilling. And mm. uh, I I think it's good and it's super healthy to try a bunch of different stuff once once you start in video. Um, so that you can really figure out like what what makes yeah. you come alive and uh, because that that typically means if if you get super excited about it then you could probably get potential clients or clients excited about it and at the end of the day the what you're going to create will will be filled with passion and people can feel that right that's there's a difference there yeah absolutely i think i think it has been really beneficial to uh to help me narrow down the type of work that i like to do um and probably more importantly, the type of work that I don't like to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, lots of, lots of learning curves, uh, steep learning curves through that process and, and some, you know, horribly underbid, overworked jobs and, uh, you know, types of work that I just I'm going to try to steer, steer away from now. <laughs> what's, what's a good piece of advice uh, on one of those jobs where you way underbid it? Like looking back, uh, what, what kind of advice would you give yourself or to somebody else that might be in the yeah. middle of like possibly doing something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one job in particular that I'm uh, thinking of, um, there were two things that could help. One was put a expiration date on the bid because <laughs> uh, they came back, you know, mm-hmm far enough along that like I would have charged more, you know, uh, out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then be, uh, narrowed down in the agreement up front of what the, what the statement of work is. Um, cause I, you know, with this project, I kept having them come back for more revisions and I was dealing with a, you know, with like a, a, the PR officer or something at, at this entity and, she would send me back edits and say, change this and that. And then I'd be like, okay, here you go. And then she like, okay, now here's my boss's edits off of those. And I went, you know, like three, four times like that up the chain. It's like, you guys couldn't just powwow together and figure out what changes you wanted at one time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, those, those two things would would have been really helpful for me to know, um, many years ago. I think that's so good. Now, you saying this, uh, I'm not going to pick on you because this is like, I've, you can, I'm used to it. It's I've okay. been, I've been in this same spot where you have this, this attitude or this mindset. And I say you, like I've, I've, I had this too, where it's like, you couldn't have just like, you know, collaborated with your team to get all of your feedback before giving it to, to me. And, and part of that is our fault for not telling people like Absolutely. You, get, you get feedback from your client and we always send an email back and just say, hey, we just want to confirm, you know, is this all of your feedback for this round? Because once you let us know that, then if there's, there aren't any other revision rounds, then it's going to cost you extra money. So right. how that looks today is uh, I think we use, we're use we using Whipster or Frame. I think we transitioned to Frame.io, but that, that's, that's kind of one of those places where people can put their feedback on the video and you want to confirm, Hey, is your team, are you guys done giving feedback? Cause once again, like when we're done with this round, I just think that's such a, it's, it's, it was a powerful thing for me to realize, like, I'm not setting the proper expectations for this client. So of course, if they can, you know, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And so they're going to say like, Oh, can you do this quick thing? And then, Oh, and by the way, like, you know, the team hasn't seen this yet. So can you, and it's like, uh, you feel like just cause you're a good person, you just feel like I, I have to do this cause I can't give them a video that's not finished or that they don't think is finished. And now the boss is giving feedback and I'm not going to do the boss's feedback. Like they're never going to hire me again. Right. So right. it's, it's our fault. It starts with us not setting those clear expectations. Right. A- absolutely. It was, you know, and, and looking back on it, it was a hundred percent, a hundred percent avoidable, um, yeah. on my end and a hundred percent my fault. <laughs> um, you know, but again, that was one of those steep learning curves. It's like, well, now I know this going forward. So let's, uh, let's do better next time. Yeah. Valuable lesson. And then what about like on the expiration, like how long do you, for your, your proposals, your quotes now, how long do you kind of honor that, uh, before you're like, eh, we don't honor those prices prices anymore. <sighs> You know, I would say I'd probably have to do it on a, you know, 
project by project basis, depending on, cause you get some companies that are, you know, needing to go through a big process to get all this done. And I might like give them a little longer, a few months or something. But if I'm wanting to push somebody to like, Hey, let's s sign on the line and let's do this, then we'll do, you know, a shorter, you know, few weeks, two, three weeks or something like that. Yeah. I think, uh, can I just do like a little f free coaching session here? Please do. I'm here for it. <laughs> I, can I would I can get. make sure whatever whatever invoicing or proposal software that you're using, uh, not invoicing, although it could probably, whatever, uh, whatever proposal software you're using, in the proposal software, like most of them, most of the apps today, like you can actually put in some kind of a, you know, an expiration thing. And mm -hmm. I, th I would say like a 30-day proposal I think it's completely acceptable. If if you sure. are in talks with somebody, um, you know, it, it's going to motivate them to make a decision. If they're reaching out to you and they're not ready to make a decision for three or four months, it's kind of like, well, why are we even like, why am I doing all this legwork right now for something that you guys really aren't even ready to make a decision on? It's kind of like one of my things. But regardless, setting, you know, 30 days, even 60 days, 60 days might be, you know, in my mind, that's a little bit long because uh, again, like, Hey, just so you know, you got 30 days to look this over. Um, who, who knows how busy we're going to be, um, in, in stuff, you know, over time it increases in as, as, as we're bringing more value to our clients and becoming more efficient and better at what we do, like we're going to charge more. So, you yeah. know, this pricing is good for, you know, X amount of days. And, and I, I just think, I feel like 30 is a good number. Uh, so that, that my advice would be having that on the proposal. Um, and then you can adjust it if you want. And then you can sure. also be the good guy and just say like, you know what, don't, don't worry about it. You know, I, I know it says it's, it, it's expired or whatever, but if you guys can make a decision in the next week or so, like we can, uh, I'll honor this. And if you need an updated copy with a new date that doesn't show that it's expired, I can get that to you real quick, but yeah. it would be my recommendation. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's another thing that I like try to convey to potential clients as well as on the timeline, like you said, with, you know, who knows how busy we're going to be. And, and, you know, particularly if they have a, a timeline, they're trying to get this done on. Um, and I'm, you know, like say we, we have this bit of time open for now. So, but it's not, <laughs> it's not yours until you, you know, until you uh, sign the contract. So. Right. Yeah, I think yeah, that's that's it. really good. That, that that is a really good point too, because there are certain seasons where we know, like, hey, the beginning of you know October, I've got the first two weeks nothing, and then everything gets crazy in the middle of October. So to even tell a client, hey, if you can sign this by this date, then we can start the project and we can do all of the shooting before life gets crazy for us in the middle of October. And I can do it for this rate. But as soon as you, if you come to us right after that, you want to start in the middle of October, my life is already crazy. So the only way that we're going to take this project on is by making it really worth our while, which means we're, we got to double the price or charge a rush fee or mm -hmm. something like that because we're already doing this other stuff. So that can help motivate your potential clients to say, oh, cool, they've got this window, they can do it, they can do it for, at this price, and if it's after this window, then it's gonna go up to this price. Like, that's a great yep. incentive to get people to actually sign on the dotted line and to, to land a job that you might not have landed otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you have a, you know, cycl cyclical business like that, that, you know, you know is gonna be coming, and yeah, convey that, absolutely. Well, tell me about uh, the the structure of your business. Like, is it is it just you? Are you working with other people? What what does that look like? Yeah. So, um, so it started out as as just me, and I worked, you know, as a solopreneur for a long time. Um, and essentially, uh, now just for the past couple of years, uh, I've had a great friend, uh, uh, Chris Gillespie. I met her at the gym down the street, and we got to talking and found out she'd actually done some film school stuff and worked for like CNN, BBC and stuff. And it's a great writer. Uh, and so we had essentially some very nice, uh, um, uh, skills that, mm -hmm. that meshed and complemented each other. Um, so we've been really trying to work together to essentially drive and build our, uh, to, to build this business and get it more well structured than that uh, than that like yeah anything that pays like let's just we'll yeah. we'll film anything and everything uh, and so we have a couple you know a couple avenues that we're we're trying to work towards in regards to that um, but uh, but it's basically she and I are 
you know, almost working as a, as a partnership, really like, um, particularly for the specific funnels that we are trying to grow the business in. Now there are certain things that I do, you know, from color grading and, um, you know, subcontracting out to other, uh, other production companies mm-hmm. or whatever to work that, that I just do on, on my own. Um, but in any case, I actually was listening to your, uh, to your show the other day with, uh, Jeremy, I think it was. And, uh, I was like, man, he's made some good points in there. I'm probably like in a pretty gray, good gray mm. area there that needs as far to be as a contractor <laughs> resolved. Versus employee. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cause we've essentially been running her as a contractor just yeah. for the, uh, um, simplicity and, and the irregularity of that segment of the business. Right. Um, you know, at least particularly till we get it going, but, uh, um, but anyway, um, you know, we're, we're putting in a lot of sweat equity together to, to get that portion of the business really up and running and, and really going into these particular niches together that we want to grow and exploit. So, yeah, that's great. So, um, just to dig in a little bit here, you said it's kind of like a partnership, but it sounds like it's nothing really has been set in stone. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Right. Essentially we have, uh, um, we have a contractor agreement, um, right now. And, and, and of course that's how we run everything through, through paperwork. And, uh, and essentially what we're looking at is that, you know, on a more medium to long-term basis, um, as we can grow that segment of the business, uh, you know, and those particular niches becomes more successful, then we are going to figure out what, makes the most sense for us structure wise, as far as, you know, whether, you know, starting a, a different LLC together right. or, you know, her buying into, you know, into the existing one, or, um, you know, there's a, a number of, of options I think that are all, you know, over my head for the most part, cause I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, but they're, they're, they're definitely things that are, um, that are on our mind that we're, you know, planning to do as the, as the business becomes worthwhile to do that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I love that. Um, a couple other thoughts here. Uh, I didn't intend for this to be a coaching <laughs> with Ryan hour, but, um, I think my, my unsolicited advice here in these situations and somebody recently in the, in the, the grow your video business, Facebook group, uh, was asking about partnerships and who else has one, who's doing one. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. my, my, uh, my hesitation with doing a partnership is, uh, that, uh, what, what does Dave Ramsey say? There's no ship that sails in a partnership. I don't know what it is, but it, he's every like, ship sets sails with two captains. Yeah, it's something, like, it's something that. like that. Um, if you're going to do a partnership, make sure that one person is 51% owner and mm-hmm. the other person is 49% owner. Yeah. Um, that way, when a hard decision has to be made, you know that one person is making it versus like, you know, trying. Because if things get ugly and you yeah. know, we've all heard of friends getting divorced or parents getting divorced or whatever, and when things get ugly, it's like, oh, um, nobody's backing down. Right. Yeah, no, uh, a- absolutely. And, and I'm uh, acutely aware of that. I, I actually, I mean, early on, um, the person that I had been doing work with, like we narrowly avoided a bad situation like that. Ooh. So, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So, anyway. yeah. And so, so in that, um, you know, having, having one person, uh, have, you know, 1% more, or I guess it would be technically two, 2% more percent, yeah. 2% more ownership. Um, and then also like, just have, have like, this is what it will look like if, and when this partnership ever dissolves. Uh, again, right. it's like the same thing with setting clear expectations with your clients. You want that no matter how awesome, like, Oh, whenever I work with so-and-so, like, it's just so cool. Like we're just creating all this awesome stuff. And like, there's no, like, you know, nobody's like, Oh, you know, we're just, we're both humble. We both want the other person to succeed. We just want our clients to have great stuff. And mm-hmm. so it's fine. It's going to go great. Yes. They're they're in. Sometimes that's always the case, but in most cases, that's not always the case. And you just need to prepare, be prepared for if, and when it's a new season for you or it's a new season for her and it's time to move on. You need to know like, what does that look like and have it spelled out? So my recommendation is working with a lawyer that, 
that does partnership uh, agreements so that you know, one person is majority owner and then here's what it looks like if and when you walk away you know are people buying people out is the business just going to dissolve like yeah. what are the options um i just feel like that's even as you guys are like trying to figure out what do you what do you want this to look like this is probably a great time to just say like well let's just create an llc a partnership llc and when we're ready to like define like what it's you know what we're actually doing like what is the work that we're going to be doing uh, then you know now now is just such a good time to do that before you get too far in because a lot of times what happens is you've already got clients and then s- more stuff is happening you're seeing success and then you just don't have time to go back and then you know it's four years down the road and then somebody's like i'm out like i'm ready to do something different it's like well wait a second like you can't you want me to buy you out like we never talked about that we never figured that out and then it's just like potential for lots of ugly right yeah and i think that's one of the the great things that we have going for us in the sense that we, you know, we have started having these discussions and we're, you know, talking about what do you want this to look like? What do I want this to look like? And, you know, um, just being very transparent, I guess, with, uh, with one another. So, yeah, that's good. Super healthy. Thanks for letting me, uh, you know, share. (laughs) Um, well, what, so, so it sounds like you've got the production company, skinny guy productions, uh, you, you're doing some freelance, so you are a colorist. So you, you know, Dan Buley, like inside, he was actually just on a recent episode. You do coloring for him. Uh, you're, you're also doing other projects with, with other people as a freelancer. Am I missing anything? Um, you know, I think, uh, uh, Structurally, the only the only other aspect uh, of business that that we'll have going forward, um, you know, we have we have a few things that you know are close both to both to Chris and I's heart as far as stuff that we the type of the type of work that we want to do. Um, yeah. So, like we we've done political work with uh, you know s- local and statewide candidates uh, um, here out of the Kansas City area and across Missouri. Um, And, uh, uh, that's something that is really important to us to keep going, even though that's not, you know, remotely related to the niche that we are really trying to grow and make the primary portion of the business. So, uh, you know, that's another area where we're, we're going to essentially create a different brand, uh, Mm -hmm. and probably just do it as a, you know, as a DBA, uh, off of the current LLC and still be able to do that, but have it separated, you know, for a number of reasons, <laughs> uh, from, from the rest of our, uh, rest of our work. So, um, I think the biggest challenge and thing that things that we've been working towards with this business is essentially how to segment portions of the business. So, you know, when we are trying to market to a particular, um, niche and create a sales funnel that we put that the forward facing part of our business to those clients looks like more or less that's the business. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have, you know, we don't have political clients that, you know, are seeing, oh, they do, you know, manufacturing uh, type videos, you know, product and company videos and brand videos and stuff. They do political advertising uh, and, and vice versa that, you know, any of those other clients are not like, oh, they just, they do a bunch of political stuff and we don't want to have anything to do with that. So, uh, yeah, it's just really essentially looking like a, trying to look like a specialized company in a few segments that we want to do that are disparate from each other. Why do you, why is that important to you? I, I, you mentioned that before the show, we're talking about it now. Why, why is that idea of segmenting and niching down or <clears throat> excuse me, niching down? Um, <laughs> you know, I said niching, that- I said niching all my life and you started getting me to say, say niching a, a lot. And, uh, uh it's, it's been welcome. an uh, internal struggle. So anyway, so I want you to um, share about that, but then, then I really want to just know who you voted for. Cause you know, in the list, all this political, that's I'm what just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so trying to segment the business out, is important to us because we really want to keep doing some of this political work with candidates that we believe in. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we will just go out and are for hire for anybody who, you know, wants to pay us money for that. Um, because there would be, you know, particular candidates who, if they came to us and said, you know, here's the cash, let's do it. But 
that's not a message that we're on board with, like that's problematic to us. Um, they said that here's triple the cash. Here's triple the cash. Yeah. Whew. You know, <laughs> I'd like to say no, but it depends on what time of the you know, yeah. <laughs> year it is and what business looks like now. Um, no, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I don't think anybody who knows anything about Missouri, uh, uh, knows that, uh, um, the, uh, shall we say the more progressive end of the spectrum has a, a big, uh, wall to come up mm -hmm. against, uh, with, with how, uh, the structure of the state is. And so, um, it's important to us to do what we can to help fight the good fight as we see it so well yeah so i i think also what you're trying to say is the importance of segmenting and having you know specific marketing language around who your niche or niche is uh can only help for you to get more of the kind of work that you want to inside of the, that niche, whether it's political, whether it's, yeah. you know, uh, if you're in the, if you're doing weddings, you know, maybe you don't want to do weddings that where people are spending less than $10,000. You only want to be doing right. high end weddings, you know, and, and making that very clear in the, your branding right. and your messaging and your email funnels and all of that stuff. So if, and when you say like, man, there's, you know, we really like doing manufacturing videos and we really like doing political videos, but it, you know, putting them on the same website or at least right. on the same landing page just doesn't make sense. It's going to be confusing. Yeah. Uh, we, we could never really point people, you know, if we did Facebook ads and we pointed people to this, you know, our web page that has, you know, three different plus, you know, we do wedding videos too. And all three of those videos are on the front page. Your, your messaging is totally diluted and nobody's going to be leaning in. If anything, they're just yeah. going to be like, what, what do these guys specialize yeah. in? But if Absolutely. they know that you specialize in something very specific, then if, if that's where they align, they're going to have a phone call with you, right? They're going to be more curious. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think that's, I think that, you know, really is, is applicable to, to, you know, any type of work that, that you do. Um, you know, and I, you mentioned weddings, like, I think that's a great example because that's, you know, something I have done historically. Um, not something that I want to do or push anymore. Right. I don't have it on the website. Um, mm -hmm. I've got like a hidden landing page. Um, if somebody comes and specifically seeks us out and we, you know, our schedule and budget match up, then we'll do it. But you know, that's not something that we put on, put on the website mm -hmm. so that, yeah, that anybody can just navigate to. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, it applies to any kind of, uh, any kind of niche or, or funnel that you're trying to create, I feel like. But I think, you know, most importantly though, niche or niche, like where, where do you land? <laughs> uh, I mean, in my heart, niche is where I <laughs> like land, heart, but says. <laughs> you know, uh, the, 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 the quiches are in the niches. That's right. Yeah. Their riches are in the niches. The niches. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We'll just start saying re yeah. reaches. I don't know. Reaches. It's probably just that, like, it's probably just that, like, the, the, Fr the French background of that soft CH that gets me. <laughs> That's right. Know. There it is. Well, Ted, talk a little bit about color grading. I know this is uh, yeah. a passion of yours. Like, how the heck did you, why? <laughs> and, oh, and then, in, you know, in what capacity are you doing it today? Yeah. Um, so, uh, for starters, like, color grading is my absolute most favorite part of post-production. Like it's the one part that I could, you know, if I were doing that day in and day out, I would be happy, mm -hmm. uh, editing, you know, maybe like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, I started out doing it just, uh, um, to grade my own stuff. Um, and you know, just threw myself into, into learning it and everything I could about it. And so I've been doing it for, for several years now. And, and we, uh, we color grade everything, just about that, that goes out the door from, uh, um, from skinny kid. But then we also offer those services to, uh, uh, to other filmmakers and videographers. So our good friend, Dan, uh, from Bewley productions down in Oklahoma, um, he's been absolutely great to work with. He sends me nearly every video that he mm -hmm. makes and we color grade it for him and we can, um, you know, we can do more creative, uh, look stuff or we can just, match your cameras, which is a big deal for, you know, a yeah. lot of folks. And like, you know, they're out there, we, we can't all afford to have match cameras on, on set or for various reasons don't. Um, and sometimes we just don't want to have that jarring 
cut from, you know, the Canon to the Sony or whatever it is. Um, so, uh, uh, so anyway, yeah, just, uh, been doing a lot of that work and love, uh, um, love picking it up from anybody who, you know, could need it, would help them and would take their, take their projects to the next kind of level, I guess. So guys giving us all permission to shoot on auto white balance. <laughs> yeah. We'll and, fix it in post. It'll we'll fix, fix it in post. post. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Thank you for that permission. Yeah. Guy. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is a weird question, but do you see yeah. that? Is there a, uh, is there a return on that investment? Like, like to color grade something that's, you know, my client, I don't know if, if they'll really notice the difference or, or what's, what's your opinion on like, is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, perhaps I'm a little bit biased, but yeah, I, I absolutely think that it's worth it. Um, I mean, I keep coming back to Dan, but as a is a great example. Like, you know, he was doing plenty of work and doing just fine before you know he and I met. Um, but now he sees that value going to his clients that he can have a more consistent product. You know, it's it's um, whether. Again, whether he is just trying to give, you know, an image a little bit of extra punch or like sometimes there is stuff that happens yeah. like, man, this is where our lighting, we couldn't control it totally. And it, like it needs a little bit of work. Um, and I mean, <laughs> the best thing I can say is that like those people keep coming back, you know, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Um, You're like, Ryan keeps shooting on that AWB thing. <laughs> right, right. I don't know. Yeah, and I Line love, I especially, yeah, I especially love when we have to uh, adjust uh, white balance or exposure like halfway through a shot. That's like, <laughs> right, you know, right. Moving around. It's like <laughs> the stutter, fix the Full stutter. Auto. Yeah. The yeah. Green square, that's good. Um, that's, uh, yeah, I think, and, you know, I, I think the, the, the type of person that I would be for are those, you know, smaller, production houses, solopreneurs who, who are, you know, have been just going straight out of camera. Um, and, and yeah, just want to add a little bit of extra production value, um, to their projects. That's I love totally that. worthwhile. That's great. Yep. Super helpful. Uh, so are you on DaVinci resolve or something? Yep. I'm trying to act like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Reading with. Yep. Yep. Color, color on resolve. So you guys yeah. see how smart I am. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, yeah, you, you're on top of it. You're so on top of it. Um, yeah. What's cool is, is, uh, with the type of work that I do, like, you know, I do, I do mostly remote work with, with clients that I'm doing for color grading. Um, and so, you know, and I can work with people who are, uh, editing on, you know, any platform, whether it's, whether it's DaVinci or Premiere or Avid or, you know, Final Cut or anything like that. Um, I help, uh, my clients through the process of, you know, making that transfer to me and back to them, um, to, you know, ultimately conform their timeline with the color grading clips as easy and seamless as possible. And we can do it for people who are anywhere. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the magic of what we do today. It's so <laughs> yeah. cool. I mean, yeah, seriously, like a, a decade ago, we we're shipping hard hard drives, and right. uh, and there's so much that you can do without having to do that anymore. It's so it's just wild. It's so yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's fantastic. I do I do a little. I have a few projects that are big enough that that's still worthwhile oh, yeah, sure. to do. But yeah, most yeah most of it the you know the Dropbox and Google Drive and stuff take care of it. So mm -hmm. it's pretty well, nice. uh, guy, this has been really fun. Um, I'm curious from, from your perspective as you're, you've been doing this for how long? Oh, nine, 10 years, I think. Okay. So yeah. seasoned veteran. Um, yeah. what, what would you say to your, uh, your 10, not your 10 year old self, your 10 year ago <laughs> self, uh, starting your business? What, what advice uh, would you give, uh, to you or to somebody that's uh, wanting to get started today in this work? Oh man. Obviously find the grow your video business podcast. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that's a I great, not yeah, shameless plug. No. Yeah. Well, and if you are, it's not enough. So, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's a, that's a great question though. Um, that's a really great question. Um, Hmm. 
I feel like I think having what I would want to know at that time, you know, at least for me in my life would, would be to have much more of an attitude of go out and get it and make it happen. Um, you know, I was very much in the, um, um, in the cycle of like, well, I'm going to make great work and then stuff will come and stuff will happen. And, and in a way I was like fortunate enough with my, you know, family situation, I could afford to do that for a while and just like float along. Um, but in retrospect, I think that I really would have appreciated if I had a made the effort invested in myself and, you know, go out and, and figure out how to make it happen and, and, learn, and learn on the business end what I didn't know, you know, because no. you, uh, you don't know what you don't know. And so seeking out resources like that ultimately would have been really helpful because that's, you know, uh, once that started happening, it's been very eye opening for me because like I feel like the film, the creation part, that's great. It's fun. Uh, love it. And I can do it. Um, but the other the back end is was the, the the hidden part that was a struggle for a long time for me. So, well, in the I mean, like you're saying, the the back end that's that's the part that if you really want to do this and find fulfillment in it, you, you've got to have some structure and some processes and things yeah. in place. And film school typically doesn't teach that. Uh, business school teaches you know a lot of that stuff, but it's like for all businesses versus just strictly video businesses. So mm-hmm. a resource like the grow your video business podcast. Yes. Uh, I mean, are there yeah. other and shows there and others, YouTube yeah. channels and sure. whatever? Yes, there are, but let's be honest, like they're all garbage, right? Well, and I, <laughs> in comparison, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and ultimately like, like you said, it's what, what I have wanted me to know. And that was, that was what I didn't know. I didn't know. No. Yeah. You know? Um, so <laughs> I had, I had, no idea what I was missing out on essentially from, from building a business. So mm-hmm. just yep, thought it would happen. My, it doesn't, my it turns favorite. out, tur- turns yeah, out it doesn't right. just happen. <laughs> yeah. You've got to do stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, pr- having permission to fail, to, to fail yeah. forward, to learn from your mistakes. You don't learn until you launch. Uh, you can have a business plan and all these formulas and processes. But if you're not actually doing the stuff, then who cares if you've got all that figured out? It's like, I don't care. I could see like a, an MBA saying like, okay, I did, I got my whole, like, here's how I'm going to run my video business. And then it's like, you can't run a video business. Like, that, right. You got to do it and then see like, right. Oh, that's how creatives work. Or, Oh, that's actually how clients respond or don't respond. And, um, right. yeah. So that, I think that's, that's sage advice. Yeah. Well, I think having, and, and having a, a community to, to, bounce things off of, you know, somebody else who is, who is in the business that you can just talk to, which by the way, like, is it just me or has the, uh, uh, have the, the Facebook pages, the grow your video business group pages have just like recently exploded with activity. I feel like, and it's been a ton of, ton of people on there who are, you know, coming for and receiving and giving great advice. So that's been, that's been awesome. And yeah. Yeah, that that has been uh, sort of like you know it's kind of like this like slow sort of grow, and then I've, I'm like, oh yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of engagement and a lot of like helpful stuff. Uh, so that that has been actually pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, that is the Grow Your Video Business Facebook page, which is free. <laughs> in case you are not on there or in there, get in there. Uh, guys For those there, of you I'm listening there. who have never heard of that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shame on you. Um, Guy, how can people follow along with what you've got going on? Maybe maybe they're interested in color grading, like having their stuff color graded. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully by the, uh, uh, by the time this airs, we will have a new website up, which would be great. You can find us there. Um, unfortunately, I'm like kind of terrible on uh, uh, keeping well up to date social media, but you can find us on uh, Facebook at Skinny Kid Productions. That's S-K-I-N-I. Um, and, uh, uh, on Instagram at skinny kid prod. Um, so, uh, yeah. And for those interested in, in checking out color grading, um, hit me up. Let's check out your project. I'd love to uh, give any of your listeners, uh, 
uh, 25% off of their first quote. Uh, if they just let me know that they, you know, listen to your podcast and heard us, heard us there. Um, awesome. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so much more affordable than you think. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's actually smart. Um, so is, should they DM you, send you an email? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you if they do want to quote on a, on a project? Uh, probably email would be, uh, um, would be the best of just guy at skinny com. again, S K I N I K I D. Um, hit me up there, which you can, you can find that on our website as well. And, um, yeah, get in touch with us and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up, we'll get you going. Is it, inappropriate to ask like maybe like a starting price for like projects or do you not want to get into that? Yeah, no, no, we can, we can a little bit. Um, I mean, there, there is a lot of variation depending on, um, the, the project. So I have some clients that if I have a lot of repeat business with them and they have a particular style of editing, if you will, um, you know, I can get essentially set prices so then they can go bid something and know that my, you know, mm -hmm. the cost for the color grading is built into that and they can mark up, you know, whatever their, uh, profit margin is on that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, certain things we can, we can get done for as little as a few hundred dollars. Um, you know, and occasionally I'll have somebody that sends me just a, these are usually not as much on the grading, but as the problem clips, you know, yeah. they'll send me an individual clip that needs a little, uh, love and attention. Um, you know, and something like that, you, uh, you know, I can do for as little as uh, about $35. So, Ooh, um, right. yeah, which is great. Crazy, huh? Well, how, and then how, how long does this, uh, this promotion run? What's the expiration on, on Ooh, your, no, I'm just that's kidding. a great, yeah, <laughs> but, but, but maybe, maybe I'm not kidding. But maybe, yeah. Well, uh, uh, whew, you know, how, how, uh, how long are you going to be gaining new listeners for this episode? <laughs> I mean, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? For yeah. Moment. Well, I would say it's, uh, it, it'll easily be good through the end of this year. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to put a date on this episode. It's like, it's the year. <clears throat> yeah. The year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's saying like, yeah, whenever this, uh, I'll have a new website up whenever this, uh, airs, but if you go there and you think it looks like <laughs> right. shit, then it's probably the old one. Let's go with, it's the old site. Yeah. Oh man, Guy, so. thank you so much uh, for spending time with us today. Awesome uh, for you extending that offer to our listeners and uh, just excited for you, your family, your business, and uh, looking forward to getting more time with you. Hey, Ryan, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to check out the show notes for any of the links or references that we made on this episode. And I would love to hear from you. If you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, please leave a comment below and let me know what resonated with you. What did you like from the episode? What stood out? Um, would love to hear from you. I'm always encouraged when I see people uh, that are saying like, yes, I learned this or this was a big takeaway or this show stings. <laughs> Um, plus I, I keep saying this, but once you write it down, once you take something that's inside of your head and you write it down, uh, you're more likely to do it or it's just more likely to be ingrained in you. So, um, there's a little tip for you. So not only would the comment be good for me to read, but it would be good for you if, if, uh, if there's something going on inside that, uh, that you should maybe do or start or something like that. Also, remember to join the free community if you are not a part uh, of the Grow Your Video Business uh, Facebook community. You can go to studiosherpas.com slash community and get right in. You'll fit right in there. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Grow Your Video Business. I'm also at Ryan Coral. That's K-O-R-A-L. And feel free to reach out if you need anything else in the meantime. I can be found Ryan at studiosherpas.com in the world of email. That is all, my friend. Onward and upward. Talk to you real soon. See ya.